In the headlines, death toll from Zaria Mox collapse rises to 10 as Christian Association of Nigeria condoles with Muslim Ummah. Troops neutralize three bandits, rescue 10 kidnapped victims and recover AK-47 rifle in Kaduna State. Three killed as rival called groups clash at Oshun Oshobo Festival. And from the foreign scene, Hawaii wildfire death toll hits 80 as probe launched into blaze response. Hello and welcome to Trust TV News Updates. I am Sumaya Abubakar. Thank you for joining us and now the details. The death toll from a mock collapse in Zaria in Kaduna State has risen to 10 with 7 injured. The incident occurred at 4 p.m. on Friday when Muslims worshippers were observing their evening prayer. The Emir of Zazon Hubamali, who confirmed the incident, said the worshippers were in the second sujood prayer when suddenly the affected portion of the mock collapsed on those sitting directly at the section. The royal father further explained that the victims were covered by debris from the wall built with mud, which had been in existence for the past 150 years. He, however, directed the worshippers to pray outside the box pending when repair work would be carried out. And meanwhile, the Kaduna state governor, Obasani, has expressed sadness over the death of some victims of the incident. The governor, who spoke through his chief press secretary, Mohammed Shehu, at the funeral for the victims, commiserated with their families and the entire people of Zazaw Emirates, praying the repose of their souls and quick recovery of the injured. In the meantime, the victims have been buried according to the Islamic rites. <laughs> The Christian Association of Nigeria, the CAN, has extended its condolences to the Muslim Ummah following the tragic loss of lives in the collapse of a section of the historic Zaria Central Mosque during Friday's prayer session in Kaduna State. The incident occurred at 4 p.m. on Friday when Muslim worshippers were observing their evening prayer with 10 persons dead or confirmed dead in a statement on Sunday or Saturday. Can President the Archbishop Daniel Oko sympathized with the families who lost loved ones in the unfortunate incident and prayed for the quick recovery of the injured. Oko urged the government and all relevant stakeholders to ensure a thorough investigation into the causes of the incident with the aim of preventing such accident in the future and also ensuring that the safety of worshippers in all places of worship across the country. Meanwhile, the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Abbas Tajuddin, has condoled the Emir of Zazaw, Ahmed Nuhuba Mali, his constituents and families of victims that died during the collapse of parts of the Zaria Central Mosque on Friday. In a statement by his special advisor on media and publicity, Musa Krishi, on Saturday, he described the incident as disheartening and devastating. Abbas, who represents Zaria Federal Constituency of Kaduna State, said he received the news of the unfortunate incident with shock, noting that he was pained by the death and injury of his constituents in the mishap. He prayed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give the families of those that lost their lives the fortitude to bear the losses and for the quick recovery of those that sustained injury during the incident. On security, troops of one division Nigerian army have continued its aggressive clearance operation against criminal elements in the division's area of responsibility. The operation has again yielded positive results as the gallant troops made contact with marauding bandits and criminal elements. 
acting on credible intelligence on 11th August 2023, troops exploited Kabode General Area of Chukung Local Government Area of Kaduna State and made contact with marauding bandits and engaged them in a fight. Troops of one division and Nigerian army have neutralized three bandits in Kabode village of Chikun local government area of Birninyeru village of Igabi local government area of Kaduna state. Now the troops during the operations recovered one AK-47 rifle loaded with 28 rounds of 7.62 mm, one camel jungle hat, three mobile phones, one head warmer, uh, one mp3 player champs and cash a statement by the acting deputy director army public relations one division nigerian army lieutenant colonel musa yahya says that the troops also rescued 10 kidnapped victims at Dambaba village of igabi local government area According to Yahya, the general officer commanding one division, Nigerian Army, and force commander Operation Well Punch, Major General Ba Alabi, commanded or commended the troops and pleaded with the communities to continue to avail the Nigerian Army and other security agencies with timely and credible intelligence. Meanwhile, troops of Operation Hadarin Daji have rescued two kidnapped victims less than four hours after their abduction at Mada community in Gusau, local government area of Zamfara State. Those kidnapped were said to be the former provost of the Federal Technical College of Education, Gusau, and his son, who were weeks away on Friday, 11th of August. Troops of Sector 1 of Operation Hadarin Daji deployed at forward operating base Mada in Zamfara State while on routine patrol along Shemori Yandoto Road at Marike General Area engaged the kidnappers in a gun battle for several hours, forcing the bandits to flee in disarray into the forest along, and along the area and abandoning their victims. The troops safely rescued the two victims. Now, two operational motorcycles were recovered from the fleeing armed bandits. And meanwhile, the kidnapped victims have been reunited with their families amid jubilations while the troops continued to maintain aggressive vigilance and patrol in the general area. Nigeria's First Lady Oluremi Tinubu has received Rebecca Kabu, one of the 277 Chibok schoolgirls who were abducted by Boko Haram terrorists in 2014. The First Lady, who received Rebecca along with the wife of the Vice President Nana Shetima at the Presidential Villa Abuja, promised to ensure that Rebecca is well taken care of medically and fit to return to school willingly. Tinubu, while assuring that the remaining girls in captivity are not forgotten, appreciated the Office of the National Security Advisor, National Intelligence Agency, and other security agencies and those who were involved in Rebecca's rescue. Earlier, Rear Admiral Yaminu, uh, Yaminu Musa, the coordinator of the Counterterrorism Center Office of the NSA, said Rebecca kidnapped at age 13 in 2014 and now 22 years old was rescued by the government security agencies on July 17th. We just pray and continue to pray that um, all our children that are left, they can come back home. And we are also expecting them. We are waiting in earnest that they will return. And uh, we pray that, you know, uh, all of them that, you know, they might be watching that we have not given up, you know, for them returning. We can only wish her well that when she goes home to her parents, that I know they will be so glad, no matter how. Your Excellency Rebecca has been found to be in good health and is psychologically stable. <clears throat> the next step is to hand over her to the Bono State governor for onward reunification with her family, currently living in Uzalam village in Chibok, local government area of Bono State.
three persons reportedly killed following a violent clash between rival courts around the groups uh, around the Oshun Oshogo Asian group during the festival's grand finale on Friday. Also, 10 operatives of the Nigerian Hunters and Forest Security Service, the NHFS, were wounded by the hoodlums during the clash. The incident threw Oshun traditionalists and tourists into panic as people scampered for safety. As of the time of filing this report, the cause of the clash was yet to be ascertained. The suspected cultists also vandalized the NHFS office close to the scene of the incident. Now, confirming the incident, NHFS commandant in Oshun State, Hamid Noreni, said no fewer than three persons were killed in the clash that ensued between the suspected cult groups. Now, in health, the Nigerian Association of Resident Doctors has suspended its nationwide strike. President of the association, Oji Emeka Innocent, told newsmen that the decision was made during the virtual international or national executive council meeting of association on Friday evening. He said members of the association would resume work this Saturday at 8 a.m. Innocent said the association decided to suspend the strike following the federal government's approval of the 2023 Medical Residency Training Fund and also commenced work on the cycler on one-for-one -one replacement. He said that the association had another meeting on Friday evening where members concluded that rather than wait two weeks for the cycler, they should suspend the strike and review progress, especially as government has started addressing some of their demands. He said the government has also initiated processes towards paying salary, hazard and consolidated medical salary structure as the convents areas being owned some uh, being owned, you know, to some of the, its members. Now, NARD had embarked on an indefinite nationwide strike on July 26th following the federal government's failure to meet its demand at that time. The Lagos State Governorship Election Tribunal resumed seating on Saturday for the adoption of final written addresses in the petition filed by the governorship candidates of the Labour Party, Badebo Rhodes Vivor, and his counterparts in the People's Democratic Party, Olajide Adeniron, popularly known as Jando. The parties are Rhodes Vivor, Independent National Electoral Commission, the INEC, the All Progressive Congress, APC, its governorship candidates Babajide Sanwolu as well as his deputy Obafemi Hamzat. Rhodes Vivo and Jan Do uh, are challenging INEC's return of Sanwolu and Hamzat in the March 18th governorship election in Lagos State. While the two petitioners were absent, the third respondent Hamzat was present in court on Saturday. As of the time of filing this report, the three-man tribunal was listening to parties adopt their final written addresses in the petition filed by Rhodes before. The tribunal will later adopt the final written addresses in the petition of the PDP and its candidates. You're watching news updates on Trust TV. Coming up. Okay, we'll take a look at uh, how lucrative henna business is. This and more after the break. Stay with us.
welcome back. If you're just joining us, this is News Update on Trolls TV. And here's a recap of our top stories. We brought you death toll from Zaria Mark's collapse rises to 10 as Christian Association of Nigeria condoles with Muslim Ummah. And troops neutralized three bandits, rescued 10 kidnapped victims and recovered four AK-47 rifle in Kaduna State. Now moving on to more stories, Nigeria is contributing its quota to the global community uh, or commitment to reduce greenhouse gas emission in the face of increasing environmental threats across the world. Relevant agencies like National Environmental Standards and Regulatory Enforcement Agency are supporting industries and businesses in transitioning to the, green, the greener practices and reducing their carbon footprints. Habiba Ajayi makes a report. Climate change and environment degradation continues to affect various regions differently in Nigeria. National Environmental Standards and Regulations Enforcement Agency has raised the bar to complement the Paris Agreement towards contributing to the nation's efforts with effective laws and policy for a safer planet. We have developed a total of 34 environmental regulations cutting across uh, all sectors of the environment. So 12 of these regulations are tell us towards reducing the emission of the greenhouse gases and uh, addressing issues of uh, environmental pollution and environmental degradation. Some of them promote uh, national environmental control of vehicular emission from petrol and diesel engine. We have national environmental air quality control regulation. The agency has promised citizens enhancement of resilience in vulnerable communities and ecosystems towards combating the challenges posed by climate change. Yes, the agency is doing this to boost the resilience of the vulnerable communities. And uh, this uh, we do by sensitizing them. The best uh, way to go about it and the best way to conduct their activities. For instance, most of us are in the habit of cutting down uh, trees anyhow, and uh, most of this climate change is coming as a result of uh, some of this attitude. So there's need for us to engage in massive tree planting to ensure that we get good drainages so that when it rains, because one of the causes of uh, the system flooding we're experiencing is a lot of climate change. Also, the Director General of Nestra, Ali Ujairu, has assured Nigerians of more technology and innovation to address environmental challenges more effectively. The agency is to use space to revive this because it's key to addressing these uh, issues of climate change. For instance, there is need for us to <coughs> gather data gather it and store it because data is key to any decision making. So in generating this data, there are now sensitive equipment with good sensors that can measure concentration of pollutants down to micro grams level. We also uh, need a lot of uh, work into that are there due to the technology. So this data is generated and is stored in a very good and safe place. The Environmental Agency says it's ready to collaborate with governmental and non-governmental organizations to achieve the set objectives of environmental protection. Abibat Ajayi, Trust TV Abuja. A henna decorator says that she pays her own school fees and help her parents and the siblings from henna decorating business. This is a story of an accounting student of Kaduna Polytechnic, Fadila Ibrahim, who has abundant creativity in henna design. Now, Trust TV's Bella Musa visited their family residence at Kurme Mashi, Kaduna, and now reports. Lele is a tree mostly grown in northern Nigeria and its liquid is used for decorations on women's skin, especially on legs and hands. In her salon, it is called Kunshi, while Kanuri call it Nalli. 
It is a long-age cultural practice used by women in northern Nigeria, especially during wedding or naming ceremony and festivities like Salah. Kuishi, which is called henna decorations in English, has been modernized to meet the taste of the time with henna decorators springing up across the north. I was doing henna since when I was small. And henna is not something that you just wake up and see yourself doing it is creativity henna decorations varies depending on the situation and the season of festivity the card we have two types of henna am i right so the the casual is just for normal people while the bride the bride henna is for the people where where they are getting married women do henna decoration during ceremonies, more especially sala, occasions, wedding, and so on, even naming ceremony. Hina decoration becomes another way of beautifying skin, as some women cannot do without it. Oh, I always do it. Why? Because I like it. I love henna. And henna too is something that differentiates between a man and a woman. I like seeing design on my hand. I don't even like seeing my hand white like that. I like henna because henna is a design for women, ladies, and we usually do it. I'm encouraging women to do it because it's, it makes them beautiful and it, it makes their skin beautiful. Hina Decorations has been a lucrative business as it takes care of a dealer's needs. I achieve many things a lot. Like, I'm paying my school fees myself. I help my parents and my siblings. While advising young women to venture into trade and acquire skills for the betterment of their life, Fadila says her dream is to own a big henna design shop in the future. Bella Musa, Trust TV News Kaduna. Now from the foreign scene, the death toll from the wildfires on Hawaii Maui has risen to 80 as search teams combed through the smoldering ruins of Lahaini Town or Lahaina Town, I beg your pardon on that one, and officials sought to determine how the inferno spread so rapidly through the historic resort area with little warning. Hawaii's Attorney General said on Friday that she was opening a probe into how authorities responded to the devastating wildfires that have left at least 80 people dead and 1,418 people at emergency evacuation centers or shelters, according to the latest figures. The fires have become the deadliest natural disaster in Hawaii's history, surpassing that of the tsunami that killed 61 people on the big island of Hawaii in 1960, a year after Hawaii joined the United States. Fueled by dry conditions, hot temperatures and strong winds from a passing hurricane, at least three wildfires erupted at Maui this week, racing through a patch brush covering the island. Maui County officials said in an online statement that the firefighters continued to battle the blaze, which was not yet fully contained. And now in sports, a 33-year-old Bielsa-born football juggler, Tonya Solomon, popularly known as the Ball Boy, would soon be registering his name in the Guinness Book of World Records after climbing a telecom mast with a football on his head. The Ball Boy climbed over 149 steps of the mast, surpassing the existing record of 70 steps with 79 steps. Lastly, the Saudi Arabia Professional League Club. Tony Solomon achieved the feat at a 250 feet max located at the hospital junction in Yenogoa. Speaking to Trust TV shortly after beating the exciting record, a representative of the Guinness Book of World's Record, Chukwe Buka Nzuga, said, the ball boy did excellently, adding that after submission of the evidence to the Guinness Book of World's Record for approval, a certificate will be issued to him. I was so surprised seeing him climb with the ball on top of the, the mast. He got 149 steps in 13 minutes and 37 seconds. 
you know, you have a big uh, existing record of 70 steps climb. So if you can see from the video, uh, many people were surprised. How can someone of this carry carry football up on top of the mast? Oh, it did so well today. The elevated by a suborn ball juggler. Thank God for making this dream come true. Right now, pray to God for this day to come. So I've been doing this for since 2013. To this time, I've been talented. Don't know God, end up like that. He, however, advised all the talented youths to look unto God where their help come from. And finally, in sports still, we have Saudi Arabia Professional League Club. al Feha has confirmed the signing of Super Eagle winger Henry Onyekuru. Onyekuru, who signed a two-year contract, joined al Feha from Turkish Super League Club Adana Demispor. The 26-year-old has been assigned jersey number seven for the new season. The versatile winger linked up with the compatriots Anthony Nwakaime at the club. Onyekuru registered eight goals and three assists in 28 appearances for Adana Demespor last season. He previously played in Belgium, Turkey, France and Greece. And with that, we wrap up news update on Trust TV. Do not forget to follow us across all our social media platforms. I am Sumaya Abubakar. Thanks for watching.